Hey everyone, so we are gonna be talking about the FIRE movement today. What it is, what it isn't, and why you should define it for yourself. Yeah, most people get FIRE, which is financial independence, retire early, all wrong. And so we're gonna dive into some of those misconceptions and talk about what it means to us. So we're gonna talk about this FIRE movement. Um, so financial, independent, retire early. It's a thing. It's a thing now. Everyone's picking it up. The major like publications. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on it being more out there. And then personally, like what you think it means to be financially independent and retired early. Yeah, so it's really weird to have it be out there. Um, I started my financial independence journey in 2010 and it was actually about two, two and a half years before I read another blogger who was doing the same thing. I literally thought that I was doing this by myself. Um, obviously, I'd read Your Money or Your Life and knew that Joe Dominguez had retired at 30, but I felt like I was like treading this path and none of my friends knew anything about what I was doing and they thought I was kind of crazy and I'd never known anyone who'd retired early, quote unquote. And, and then I discovered Brandon from The Mad Scientist. He was the first blogger. And I was like, whoa, someone else is doing this. And around that time, like 2012, there was like 10 maybe less, you know, five bloggers. I mean, it was really, really small. But it's weird to see it getting so popular because I think it gets, um, like anything, commoditized and reinterpreted in so many different ways. And I think a lot of people out there that are writing about it are kind of missing the point. Um, it's a really good media headline. It's getting a lot of clicks. There's a lot of podcast interest in it. But really, fire to me, can be anything. it can be anything that you want it to be. Um, whether you want to actually retire early in the traditional sense, uh, retirement just as a concept, just like the way we work, the way we make money, it's, it's fundamentally changing. And the great thing now is you're able to kind of write your own story. Um, so retirement can kind of be whatever you want it to be. Financial independence, really when the term was kind of coined by Vicky and Joe, it was really just the freedom from stress around money. That's what it meant. It didn't even necessarily mean having all the money that you'll ever need. And so FIRE, it really can be whatever you want it to be. It's really about living life on your own terms and you know not letting money stress you out and focusing on living a great life and using money to do that. Um, not about making as much money as you can or about becoming a millionaire. And so I really just, but that's not as great of a story, mm -hmm. right? Fire is like live life on your own terms. Right. Um, and so it's always now, there's a, once again, I think an over focus on frugality or on cutting back. There's not as much focus on trying to make more money. Um, it's really about, to me, living life on your own terms and living in a different way than this traditional success narrative that's always been sold to us. And it threatens a lot of people. I mean, that's why there's a lot of haters out there because it's, threat, it's threatening the traditional career path of working for 40 years and saving and retiring. And I think a lot of the haters are people who just, they, they really don't quite understand that this, in fact, is a way is an empowerment path. I mean, it's a way that you can live life on your own terms and you can make it whatever you want. Um, just because there's a media story about someone who did it a certain way doesn't mean that's the way that you could or should or will do it. But the fact that you don't have to necessarily rely on a boss or a company, that you can actually live life on your own terms and a life that you really love is, is the entire point uh, of fire. And that's one of the things that I wish was talked about, but it's not, it doesn't get as many, it wouldn't yeah, get as many clicks. So for me, fire, like, you know, the whole movement is it's, it, it is going to be something where there's like fire police, right? Like there are people right. telling you like fire police. what it is. Yeah. Like that it should be like, you know, yeah. like, oh, so, but so for me, what fire means is the same thing. It's like you living life on your own terms. And I actually believe everyone should be on this journey. Yeah. Like everyone. It doesn't even matter like if you are going to reach it, unfortunately, because a lot of people actually don't mm -hmm. reach this, you know, saving four million and all this stuff. Like yeah. some people or two million, whatever your number is where you feel financially independent. Some people won't reach it. But the steps you need to take to reach that goal. Mm -hmm. So getting out of debt, um, being more conscious about your money, you know, creating uh, side hustles if you wish and 
yeah. like just increasing income, all those steps will put you in a better position. Mm -hmm. So why not start, right? It's like almost like reaching for the stars or reaching for the moon, but if you like miss, you'll be in the stars kind yeah. of thing. So okay, you're not gonna maybe save the million dollars that you need because you started late yeah. or you know had some mishaps, but you're being in a better position. You, okay, you saved 100,000. It's better than not even having anything, right? Yeah, so, if you get fired, you can still live. And, you know. Yeah, so I think for everyone, it's important to at least understand this. But I think what turns people off about the movement, especially if they are not aware of it or not really in it, is that it just seems like unattainable mm -hmm. and unrealistic because they're like, well, what are you going to do? Like, sit on a beach all day. And what I find interesting is that most people in the movement are people who are, you know, talking about it. I haven't yet to meet people who really do nothing all day. They're doing something, they're just doing things that they want to do. Right. You know, so whether that is being on a beach, which is fine, but most people intend or keep working. So in my story, when I started, I said I was going to reach financial independence at 40 years old. But that looked different probably from like the traditional fire like thing that people think of because what it meant was that I would have the option to quit my corporate job right. because we had enough money saved up we could live off our investments and my husband's income. So the big thing about that was my husband was gonna keep working. So the fire police, um, if they're out there, would look at that and be like, well, that's not really fin being financial independent because you're living off your hus husband's income. Like, yeah. how is that different from, you know, maybe being like a stay-at-home wife or something? And so for me, the, the distinction is one, it can mean something different for everyone. And in my case though, it did mean putting ourselves in a position where if I, didn't have to work, I wouldn't have to, but doesn't mean that I'm not bringing money into the family. It means that we could literally live off of our investments and my husband's income if we, need, we needed to, just because we had set ourselves up like so well, like on this path. And so I just think it's interesting or it's good to talk about like what it really means and how it can be different for different people. Yeah. So don't think just because you hear it one way that you can't craft it into your, like your own like reality. And, and pursuing it has already given you so many more options. I mean, of leaving the corporate world and diving into entrepreneurship, but also having more time to spend with your family. I mean, it's it's working for you. And yeah. you haven't even had to save all the money you'll ever need. You're already benefiting from taking the steps. Yeah, I found a way to find freedom today yeah. um, that I wouldn't have otherwise known unless, mm -hmm. you know, I, if I didn't start the journey. Yeah. And so quit this, you know, my job, a well-paying job. So it's like kind of the conversation around like what's money and what's happiness and freedom. So I could have stayed in this job for the next five years and just, you know, continue to save aggressively, it, yeah. right? And then reach the goals that I set. Or because I realized like, especially, you know, just at the point in my life that I am, that it meant more to me to be with the people I love, you know, my mm -hmm. kids and to have this time freedom to not be in my car for four hours a day. Yeah. Like that meant a lot to me. It meant more than actually this goal of saving a million dollars. Yeah, that's the big thing. I wish people understood. Yeah. yeah, and so I was able now though to like then like take this leap, you know, quit my job because we saved and, you know, paid off our debts and, mm -hmm. and to take this risk it is what it is. Calculated to, risk. A calculated risk yeah. to see what this is like. And for me, like, I'll never regret this. So no matter what happens with this, like, path and journey, I'll never regret this. So this, in fact, could propel me to financial independence earlier, right? Because right? I'm walking in my purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the things I love. So therefore, like, you know, the abundance mindset, like, the money will come. Or it could delay it. Right. Let's just say this is like a total failure <laughs> and I have to go back and get a job. It right. It, it would never. So and for me, too, it's like nothing really is a fail, failure. Yeah. Right. But so I always look at it as it can propel me to my journey like faster. It could propel me to that point or it can like slow me down. But either way, I win because my worst case is every, some people's everyday scenario. Yeah. It's like going back to get, you know, maybe a corporate job. But you know what? I'd be in a position now to get a corporate job that I feel like I love or I'll be able to choose that more wisely mm -hmm. this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we live in such an all or nothing world where we're told we need millions of dollars or to be financially independent or to even retire early. But who are you to tell me how to live or who am I to tell you how to live? It's just like, it's our own journey where we're always learning. And really at the end of the day, I realized that money was kind of infinite. You know, you can always go back to the corporate job. You have these skills. You can always go get a couple extra jobs. You, you have the skills and the ability and the mindset to go out and make more money, but you're not gonna get back this time. You know, your, like your, your, your kids, you know, if you, there's a huge difference in like working, and there's nothing wrong with this, you know, working at a desk for 50 hours while your kids are growing up and, you know, but I hear so many people who are really stressed or feel really stuck in their job. And, you know, you ask them, why are you working so hard? And say, oh, you know, because I want to spend more time with my family. I want to have more money for my family. But in reality, 
there might be a way that you could move to a lesser paying job and have more time to spend with your family today. Right. You know, and yes, you might be giving up some money, but you, you've gotten more time essentially. Or just the simple fact that a lot of people are leaving money on the table. They're not taking full advantage of their benefits of their company. They're not negotiating for raises. They're not getting paid their market rate. There's you know, so many things that you can do to optimize how much money you're making for your time that a lot of people just don't make the effort uh, to do. And one of the big things is, to me, success ended up not being about money at all. It ended up being about peace. And I, it took me a long time to realize that because I was in the corporate world, you know, I walked away from two companies that I helped start that were making a ton of money. And I haven't actually done the estimations, but I probably walked away from, you know, at least seven to $10 million over my career because I realized a few things, A, that I had enough and B, that I was getting older and time was becoming more fragile and I didn't feel like I had as much energy as I used to have. And all of these things, I realized that I was only kind of happy when I was growing and when I was changing and when I was challenging. And it took me about nine months to detox from this intense corporate stress that I'd built up so much. And it didn't happen until eight months later. I was just sitting, uh, you know, on the coast in England. I was doing some writing and I felt really weird. I was like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? And I realized it was the first time I'd ever felt at peace. But was part of that peace from knowing that you were financially secure, that you had money? Didn't enough have money? anything really to do with it, okay. actually. It was because I'd taken the time to stop and to slow down. Like we talked about, you know, in another episode, taking the time to ask yourself those important questions about like, is this really the life I wanna be living? My entire FI journey, I never asked that question once. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to get to financial independence to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, you could have this peace, you know, so much. Yeah. I mean, I feel thankful that I was 33, but you can have this peace and this freedom so much earlier in your life I didn't even need a lot of that money in order to have that feeling. Right, because you can travel on this path all this time, being yeah. miserable about it, you know, right. saving and squirreling away money. And some people actually find joy in that. And so that, like, right. that's fine. But if, if it's going to be a journey in which, like, it's so painful, you don't enjoy it, yeah. then you're missing the point. Or you're asleep. Because, right, you're sleepwalking through it. You're not intentional or, you know, it's so it's a bigger, like, it's bigger than mm -hmm. just the end goal. Yeah. Um, and I think too, what happens while you're on this journey is the skill set, like the person you become, yeah. if you do it the right way. Now I know there's like no right or wrong way, right? But meaning the right way, meaning, you know, you're increasing your knowledge, your skill set. So most people I, I find that are on this path become a lot more resilient and scrappy and resourceful. Yeah. And so even me, like, so these skill sets that I have now, I mean, I've always kind of like been able to like kind of talk to people and you know talk about money but not in this way so not since since starting like my business mm -hmm. and now being on camera more and like meeting people and it's it's a different skill set that I'm, that I'm building that if I had to even go back to like corporate America I can like my prospects of what I could do are so much larger now right like my resume now because of you know the things I've done in this time frame it's so much larger that Crazy. I can now choose more things. I know at least more what makes me happy, the things I love doing versus I didn't even know those things before. Right. Like I didn't, I wasn't even exploring those aspects of my life. Right. And it's because you took a calculated risk, right? And you didn't necessarily, because when you started Journey to Launch, you were still working, right? And you didn't have to dive all in to start building these skills and yeah. feel it out and see if you enjoyed it and if you liked it. And I think that's one of the cool things about the time that we're living in is because if you're curious and you want to grow, there's so many there's so many amazing resources to help you grow in a way that then through that learning, as you're saying, allows you to reflect back on and be like, you know, I don't have to take crap from my boss if I don't want to. Like, they don't know like half the things that I now know, mm -hmm. you know, how to do. And I think a lot of fire, it's really about just pushing against the status quo. It's about living life on your own terms and taking the time and getting some space to figure that out and being scrappy and not being afraid. And that's the thing that always gets me is like, well, what happens if the economy collapses or what happens if all the jobs are automated? It's the fire people who are, have been the most scrappy who are gonna be the ones who figure it out, you know, because they have the skills, they have the mindsets, they have the resources. And most importantly, 
they're living life on their own terms. And so what's happening kind of out there, they're better able to engage with it because they know who they are. You know, they've built their own life. They're not reliant on a boss or a job or an industry or a career that could potentially blow up. They've diversified their skill sets and um, they're taking advantage of just the opportunities that are available today. And that's the thing that excites me most is because I think it's never been easier in history to make more money mm -hmm. and to live life on your own terms. I mean, you just look at the last 10 years. We, uh, like literally I've made millions of dollars just with clicks on my phone. That's how easy investing is. You know, um, a vast majority of the money that I've made, I can trace back to a series of YouTube videos that I watched for free. I mean, that's something that like wasn't possible, you know, 20 years ago. And that's the really cool thing is because it's never been easier to invest, never been easier to start a side hustle, never been easier to grow an audience, never been easier to um, share your story and grow a brand and build a network. And that's the cool thing because, you know, so many people are afraid of taking that first step. Right. But you can always go back. You can. And I just, I feel like too, as you were talking, I'm thinking about, I know we need to label it because labeling it gives it a movement and makes people feel all warm and fuzzy right. that they're a part of it. Yeah. But sometimes maybe that alienates people because you're like, oh, the fire people, right? And oh, it's yeah. like, okay, what are fire people? And, and you know, what we're trying to say is that, you know, anyone can do this. Now, when you throw out things like you made a million dollars off of a couple yeah. of clicks, that might yeah. be like, well, how do I do that, Grant? Right. Like, you know, that for some people can seem like a faraway thing, but I think the point that you're saying and what we're saying is that if you are striving for more, that there are so many resources out there. Totally. And that's like the internet. Like, you know, the internet is bad for a lot of things now, mm -hmm. but it's good for connecting with people you would not otherwise connect sure. with. You know, so there are like ways or people that I'm connecting with that I would never know today, right. you know, for not like social media yeah. and being able to like them email me and all these like things, right? So I just think that's the beauty of this movement and just the diversity of voices coming up in it is that one, you can, you know, find a tribe or find people that you could connect with that mm -hmm. you feel like most relate to you if that's yeah. what you need to feel motivated. Yeah. But then in the bigger sense, like there's so many resources, not even just like fire related, just right. like the basics that you need, right. like, you know, understanding what investing is, how to invest, you know, how to start a side hustle. So many resources at our yeah. fingertips now by just like searching like Google to yeah. find it. And it's kind of the forefront of life in a lot of ways. So I don't even think it needs a name. I mean, this is just the way the world is changing and fire has been kind of given, it's the name given to people who are taking advantage of those opportunities. Any change on a large scale level, anything that uh, challenges the status quo is gonna get resistance. People yeah. are afraid of it. Um, but this is the way the world's moving and um, it's cool to be on the forefront of that. Mm -hmm.